Assalamu salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the second session of today's questions and answers. I'm your host for the next 20 minutes or so. Well, I'm going to have the same name even after 20 minutes, but for now I'm your host and I'm Amjid Muhammad and uh, I will be with you till just about 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. Uh, and, uh, and then I will be off on my way. Uh, we are taking questions, and the questions we are taking them on is 01274 214299. That's 01274 214299. And also, we're taking emails on Q and A at iqra, I-Q-R-A dot TV. It's been rather calm so far, alhamdulillah. We've had one phone call so far uh, compared to last week, where it was absolute storm and absolute hurricane. Uh, so we're enjoying a nice, leisurely questions and answers today uh, where there's no pressure, where I'm hearing uh, my colleague shouting in my ear, next call, next call, next call, and I'm losing track of the questions. Uh, so it's nice and easy, alhamdulillah. Let's see how long that stays like that. Uh, and we do have about 20 minutes, so inshallah we should, I hope, uh, keep some, maybe one or two more phone calls. I think that will do nicely. Get him in early, as I say. I did have opportunity as a consequence to answer lots of questions which have come through on our Darul Ifta, uh, which is available on Marcos Al Ifta Wal Qada. You can search it on, uh, on um, your search engine, whichever one you prefer. But I just found out the other day there is also an easier way you can access it. How? You might say, well, if you go to Play Store or App Store, and you search Wifaqul Ulama, and I've mentioned that organization of ulama several times now, W-I-F-A-Q-U-L space U-L-A-M-A, -A, they have an app. And when you download that app, then if you go to, I need to go to remember, if you then go to um, the kind of, uh, what do you call it? The, they call it the, um, the burger menu. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can order burgers from the app. But when you go to the burger menu, which is like that menu which has like five, four or five lines, right at the top it says, consult scholars. When you c uh, connect on consult scholars or click on it, right at the bottom it says here, we strongly recommend the Marcus al Telegram group for you to seek answers to your Islamic queries. The groups are segregated, so we advise you to join the correct group and follow the rules. And there you can click here to join the group for men and click here to join the group for women. So alhamdulillah, there, are, so that you got access to that. So as long as you download the app, you will get that information. So excellent, alhamdulillah. Okay, let's get back to these questions whilst we're waiting for the phone to ring. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am currently bed bound, unable to do wudu or ghusl uh, due to severe pain in my leg. I am doing tayammum for each salah and reading isharatan yani by indication uh, in bed can i also do tayammum for farz ghusl in this case would i remove the najasat using tissues would i wear clean clothes after this as they would become soiled from najasat on the skin if that were the case would it affect my farz namaz if the bed sheets have become soiled would i need to change them to read uh, namaz isharatan on them, this is hard to do as I need someone else to do it and have to wait for them. My namaz would become kaza waiting. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I'm assuming you're contacting me from, um, you know, well, I, to be honest, I don't even know why I need to add this, but most hospitals ensure that the patient is clean and that the bed sheets are clean. I don't think you will be in a situation where you have soiled bed sheets and you will be left in that state or that you have soiled your uh, clothes and you would be left in that state. So I would be very surprised at that. If you are not able also to move around, then there will be uh, the uh, uh, nurses or whoever will give you a bed bath, meaning that they will bring water or some sort and they will bathe you in, 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 the, in the bed. So therefore I'm finding it a, a little bit um, difficult to understand, shall we say? Uh, that you'll be in circumstances where you're literally just left in a bed uh, which you've soiled, in garments that you've soiled, and you're just kind of left there like that, uh, you know, waiting for somebody to come. I, I said, I, I, you know, I find that difficult to, to comprehend. So, you know, it, it is possible for you still to make wudu even though you are bed bound, okay? Um, you, you know, the water can be brought to you. Uh, you must have some movement in your limbs. 
uh, in order to be able to do that. Uh, and therefore, because if you can use a rock and wipe your, uh, your face, and if you can use a rock and wipe your arms, then the only bit that's left now is wiping your feet. And remember, you don't need to soak yourself. Washing is such that the water flows and there is at least a drip or something off your face. It doesn't have to be like, you know, you're throwing buckets and buckets of water and drenching yourself. Um, similarly with the arm, as long as water flows along your arm, and there's, remember the Prophet used only 750 ml, approximately, 750 ml of water to make wudu. Now you get a normal box standard water bottle, that's 500 ml. So, you know, 500 ml is, is nothing. And, you know, even if you spill that on yourself, you're not really going to get much wet. So I think you should explore that really before you start looking at uh, making the yammum and, and, and going down that road. Okay, we've got another caller who's called on 01274 214299. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to your caller. Wa alaikum salam. It's only me again. Just remembered another question my sister asked. Don't worry, uh, sister. Bismillah. It's good, mashallah. We've got two callers at least. Okay, I appreciate, so, this. I appreciate it's the same person, but to me, that's two callers. That's fine. Uh, so, you know, when you go to the gym, I went to the gym and uh, had a shower, but someone commented, do you not allowed to have a shower standing up? So I said, oh, I didn't know that. Okay. So if you can just uh, I will advise do. me on that. I will do. Jazak wa khair, my dear sister. Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So taking a shower, okay, when it comes to taking a shower, uh, and then there's no really uh, easy way around it apart from standing up. That is the simplest way. And therefore, if you're going to make a shower which is very quick, then that's uh, the best way to do it. If at all you want to look at sort of covering the yani for a chap in particular, covering the lower region and even for a woman, then she can wear loose garments, okay, to cover that. Uh, however, there's no harm or any problem with her if she was to make hustle using a shower stood up. There's nothing untoward in that whatsoever. Uh, sometimes we have these kind of, uh, um, you know, what our mother has told us, which gets passed on from generation to generation and it kind of sticks with us. So as long as we're not spending hours and hours in the in the shower, it's quick, we just remove any, you know, najasad. If we're sweating, we just get rid of sweat, dry ourselves down, cover ourselves as soon as, then there's no harm in that. It's obviously if we're taking a long time in the shower uh, and then standing around talking to one another whilst we're not fully dressed um, or getting changed in front of one another. Uh, because, you know, how logical is it that Somebody has an issue with a person standing and taking a shower, but then that person is getting changed, stood up. So, you know, what's, what's the difference? Uh, well, you know, even if that person goes into a cubicle, they're still stood up getting changed. But they are told that whenever we're in undress, to be as limited time as possible in undress, uh, obviously the aura part, uh, and to get dressed as, as, as quickly as we can. Uh, so that's really how that should be understood, inshallah. Okay, so let's look at any other questions that we have. Um, okay, so, Assalamu alaikum uh, Mufti. Sorry for the long question. I've been researching Islamic mortgages for many, many, for, for several years, closely analyzing many Islamic banks like Ar Rayyan or Gatehouse. Many scholars consider that it's okay to get their mortgage. And I've seen many religious friends getting their home purchase plan. But after going, doing discussion with these banks and analyzing the contract, I'm not feeling satisfied. Although I'm in need of house for my family from last 10 years, but my heart is not inclined to get the Islamic mortgage from these banks. One point I read in Mufti Taki Usmani, uh, extracted from his Islamic banking work, that all schools of thought are agreed that in any Musharaka transaction, loss always is shared. But when I look into these banks, they don't share loss. They argue that we are not sharing profit in case if house value increases, buyer can take that profit. What is your opinion if I take that mortgage? Am I completely sinless and there is no harm in the hereafter? Or is it mubah or doubtful? Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I don't think uh, you will find any product that is absolutely clear with no ambiguity, with no issues at all. Uh, in terms of it being, uh, you know, 110% Sharia compliant, if I can use such a phrase. We work within the broader framework of the financial world, which is based on gharar, uh, kimar, uh, 
uh, riba that's just the way it is is you know if you look at the imf if you look at the world bank if you look at all these international multinational organizations that's how they work and we are trying to get a sharia product in there it's going to take a long time for that to change you know i'm not you know here we are talking in the uk which is a non-Muslim country, but you can go to Pakistan, you can go to UAE, you can go to other countries which are predominantly Muslim, and you'll struggle to find products of that nature. So therefore, uh, if you are in that environment, then you should take the fatwa of those ulama, uh, like Mufti Taqi Sahib, he is on some boards, uh, or others that you respect, and take their particular position and act accordingly. And then you are doing, uh, what you're doing is you are transferring the responsibility onto scholars who are more knowledgeable than you and who have given a position of permissibility and they then become responsible for that particular thing. I cannot comment uh, because I'm not a consultant on, on, it, on any of these banks. So how, how, is it, how can I make a comment on that? I do not know the inner runnings uh, of these organizations. I don't know the specific details. I don't know the nuances. I don't know anything about them. And unfortunately, I just do not have the time to dedicate to go through all of them myself. Uh, therefore, you know, you will have to take the views and opinions of others who have spoke about it. Anyway, that's that question answered. Um, we have a caller who's called in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear caller. We were waiting for you, Abdullah. I know, I didn't call today. I didn't call early today. No, but you, you still came in there. You know, six, seven minutes to go. You timed it well. Uh, so, you know, they, we always finish with the best, don't we, Abdullah? And we're going yeah. to finish with you because I got a feeling you're going to be our last caller for today. But you never know. Somebody might phone in after you. Let's see anyway. How have you been? I've been good, alhamdulillah. How are you? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. You've been enjoying the weather? Yeah, yeah. Quite nice. Is it is it warm in Leicester like it is here in Bradford? Yeah, it's been quite warm over the past few days. There you go, mashallah. You enjoy yourself, young man. Anyway, how can I help you? Okay, my question is, um, if you're holding a Quran and like somehow you basically do like I um, for example, if you start to bleed so much like yourself, um, what should you then do? Like if you're not inside as well, like if you're outdoors. Ah, so let me get that right. So basically, you're holding the Quran, a copy of the Quran, a mushaf, and mm -hmm. it doesn't have a cover, and you're holding it directly, and mm -hmm. I don't know, you, you cut your hand or something, so your wudu breaks. Is that what you say? So, no, it's like, so tough, but it's like, I'm like, basically, if you break your wudu by holding a mushaf, what do you, and you're outside, what should you then do with a uh, mushaf? That's exactly what I thought you said. It's good, I was getting there. Fantastic, I understand your question, sir. Okay, and the second one. Oh, second okay. one. Oh, goodness me. You're making sure you are the last caller by doing that. Go on, what's your second one? Um, uh, if you don't have wudu and you touch um, a mushaf with a cover on it, does you, are you allowed to do that? Okay, like, brilliant. So I got those two. Jazak khair, young man. You take care of yourself and give salam to the family. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Okay, so two questions from Abdullah. Sneaky, we're trying to squeeze two in there. Question number one is, you're outside, most likely coming home from the masjid, and uh, you slip or something, or somehow, I don't know, a huge bird flies past and he sees you and he thinks, oh, there's my supper. And it comes down to attack Abdullah, and Abdullah defends himself and he bites Abdullah on the arm. Well, that's not the arm actually, is it? That's the hand. And he starts to bleed, so his now wudu is broken. Now, obviously, he cannot just leave his mushaf anywhere lying around. So in those circumstances, out of necessity, it will be permissible for him to just carry on going home or wherever he's going and put his mushaf down. However, I always advise students is that have a cover for your mushaf. Why? Because you just don't know what's going to happen. So when you go to the masjid, you can take it out. Well, you know, my mother, and I'm sure many mothers used to design this when I was a kid and Abdullah, that was a long time ago. Uh, my mother used to make, first of all, she used to make a cover for the mushaf. So it would be like, you know, you would put, it would kind of come over here and come over here and it would hold. And then you would put that inside like an envelope and then have a st kind of a string and then tie it off and we used to carry that. So now, even if your wudu breaks, it's, it's cool because the cover, which is, you remember, the cover cannot be directly connected to the mushaf. 
So the one that is directly connected to the Mus'haf, that won't do. It's the other one, the envelope that you're putting it inside of. Okay, so that is the one that we use. So that then will hopefully answer question number two. Question number two you said was that if it has a cover and you touch it and you're not in the state of wudu, is that permissible? Yes, but the cover that I described. So one is, I think the word they use is jacket. You know, like if even at school, you have those plastic, you know, to make the, the buy new books, don't the school buys new books, and then it wants the books to last a little bit longer. So you'll see that they get these little plastic jackets, which the book cover goes inside, because we know the book cover gets chewed and kids rip it and scribble on it and whatever, and then the book is damaged. Okay, uh, so we have this plastic cover, but because that plastic cover is attached to the book, it becomes part of the book. And that would be the same with the Mus'haf, it becomes part of the Mus'haf. So now you're, the plastic is also part of the Mus'haf. But what we used to have as kids, and I'm sure they exist nowadays as well, is then we would take that and place that inside like an envelope, and then bring that over and wrap it up and hold it. Now the second cover, the envelope cover, is not actually part of the Mus'haf. And therefore you've now made a barrier, and therefore touching that, even if you're not in the state of wudu, is not a problem. That will also circumvent the first problem where if you were walking home and you got attacked by a huge bird and this huge bird is attacking you and you defend yourself and your hand gets cut and your wudu breaks, it wouldn't matter because you're holding it. And also what it does, it keeps the mushaf clean. And it's showing, you know, we're kind of dressing it up. We're, 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 we're understanding its value. We're respecting it. Because what we used to have is, you know, back in the day, they used to use the, the kind of, you know, best material that you had. And I don't know why we did this, but we used to always put peacock uh, feathers inside a mushaf. I still can't for the life of me understand why we used to do that. Uh, when we were kids, you know, again, that was a long time ago. I don't know where we would get peacock feathers from. You know, it was not like there were peacocks running around Bradford or something. So I don't know where we got them from. And we used to have them inside the mushaf, like it was some kind of religious thing. I still haven't explored the basis, the ba the basis of that particular understanding. Anyway, I guess we're going to have to get to that on another day, because the time is now running out. So, Jazakumullah khairan for all our callers, may Allah bless you all. And also, Jazakumullah khairan for all our listeners who are out there, and our viewers, may Allah bless you all. Uh, back tomorrow, I guess, uh, same time, same place, same person. A bit dull, but I'm sure we will make it exciting. So, all the best, inshallah. Have a good day, have a good evening. Uh, hopefully, the sun is still out when I get back into my car. And... Uh, uh, and yeah, oh yeah, thank you for that. It is exam season. I was in school today with my daughter, so it is exam season. So may Allah make your exams easy. Uh, head down, work hard. Nothing comes from being lazy. And I'm sure you will get the best of grades. All the best till tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.